My name is Mark Connolly and I'm an education researcher at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And for the past, past 10 years, I have been studying how uh, undergraduate students learn math and science, and I'm especially interested in what helps them persist as STEM majors. About 20 years ago, two sociologists from the um, University of Colorado Boulder um, took up an important question. And the question was this, why do so many undergraduates, and I mean so many undergraduates, who start college as math and science majors, um, leave those majors by the time they graduate? The, uh, some of the data that were, was coming out in the 1990s suggested that as many as 40% of those students who would start in those areas um, would leave by the time they graduated. So they decided to um, study the problem more closely and they visited seven universities and interviewed nearly 400 students to um, understand from those students who were so-called switchers their reasons for choosing to switch. And people might ask, well, what's the big deal? I mean, people switch majors all the time. And in fact, that by itself isn't necessarily a problem, but the problem in this case was that a disproportionate number of women and um, minority students were leaving math and science as well. The issue of um, underrepresentation of women and um, people of color in STEM fields um, sometimes get, gets represented in terms of a, a, a pipeline metaphor. And it has its limits, but it's nevertheless useful because if you start with the overall U.S. population, starting with women, for example, you know, a uh, little more than uh, just a little more than 50 percent, that you look then at the representation of women as undergraduate students, and we now know that um, they are some ways overrepresented as undergraduate students. But then, as they move into STEM fields, then that proportion changes, in that it gets smaller as they go to graduate school. Um, you know, so there's a kind of a kink there as they complete their doctorate, and then as they move into, um, say, uh, faculty roles, you know, getting through um, promotion and tenure. And so what you find then is you look at the upper levels of academics and faculty, and no longer do you see something that resembles the representation of women in the um, overall population. And the question is, what happened along the way that led them to feel as though, um, there were better things to do than to stay in that field. What led them to say that, um, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable staying here and that I would rather um, explore my options elsewhere, either for myself or for the sake of my family? They were focused on two types of students, um, switchers, um, juniors who had begun as a STEM major and then um, changed by the time they left, by the time they graduated, and then there were the non-switchers, those who either stayed as uh, STEM majors the whole time or they switched into some other STEM field. And to make sure that there weren't concerns about the student's mathematical ability, that they chose to include only students that had an SAT math score of 650 or higher. Seymour and Hewitt um, analyzed the data, the interviews, and they came up with 23 major factors that they identified as reasons students gave for switching from STEM majors. Um, I wonder what folks think some of those primary factors might be. So the four issues that mattered least to the students, according to um, Seymour and Hewitt, were um, the proficiency of the instructor to speak English, if in, it was the case that they didn't speak English as a first language. Class size, they said, didn't matter a whole lot. Um, poor teaching by the teaching assistants wasn't a big deal in their switching decision. And finally, the quality of the lab or the instructional facilities weren't a big deal to them. Um, so here, then, are the five factors that the students said affected them the most. The first was a loss of interest in science in general. And that's not a surprise. Students discover that once they get into their curriculum and they say, maybe this isn't for me. Um, another factor, a major factor, was the belief that non-STEM fields were more interesting to them. And again, it's not surprising that they might discover something that appeals to them more that's outside the STEM field. But the third biggest reason was poor instruction by the faculty. And it's important to note that not only the students who were switchers indicated that the poor quality of instruction affected their interest in STEM field, the STEM uh, major, but also those students who stayed and who persisted as STEM majors also said that the poor quality of instruction made it difficult for them to persist at times. And then the two other major reasons that the students gave were um, curriculum overload, things just moving too quickly, and uh, the breakneck pace that they were expected to maintain as students. And then finally, um, it was the, um, they. It was a rejection of STEM careers and lifestyles that at some point in seeing how um, the folks in that field kind of lived or how they organized as um, students and scholars, 
uh, they decided just wasn't for them, and that was another reason why they left. I think it's important to note that these uh, findings did not vary at all by institution, only a little bit by discipline, and that uh, when you looked at the individual characteristics of the switchers next to the non-switchers in terms of you know, intelligence and diligence, they were virtually indistinguishable. So it really was hard to find any other reason that would explain why these students were leaving um, math and science majors for other, other fields of study. So Seymour and Hewitt then published these findings in a book in 1997 called uh, Talking About Leaving Why Undergraduates Leave the Sciences. And the book was groundbreaking and it did a lot to um, uh, drive efforts to improve undergraduate STEM education because of the link that they were able to establish between switching and the quality of the uh, classroom experience for these students. Um, as a result, a lot of money was put into programs by funders such as the NSF in an attempt to try to improve undergraduate STEM instruction in hopes that it would keep more students in the major. So we're going to jump ahead 20 years to now, and it turns out that national data still indicate that a lot of students, as many students as when Seymour and Hewitt wrote their book, are still switching out of STEM majors. So the new problem that we're trying to address is why are undergraduates still leaving math and science for non-STEM fields? We still have um, one out of two undergraduate students who start math and science leaving by the time they graduate. And that means that in terms of the uh, number of baccalaureate awards, undergraduate degrees, only two out of every ten goes to a student in a STEM field. One of the most important things I think that the original Seymour and Hewitt study found was the importance of motivation um, to students' decisions whether to switch or to stay. Um, what they learned from their um, close and intensive interviewing of these undergraduate students was how it felt to be a switcher and the costs, for example, that were associated with it, whether they were emotional costs or financial costs, the anger, the frustration, the self-doubt, all of that came through their interviews with these students who had switched. And that was a really important contribution that the book made to efforts to understand um, switching. And what they also learned from those interviews is that it was often the case that it was an ability that kept students from persisting, but it was these other factors that led them to say, I'm not sure I belong here, I need to do something else. In other words, sometimes switchers were pulled into other majors by their interests, but in more cases, students were pushed out of STEM majors by these factors that left them feeling as though they, they weren't going to fit in and they, were, uh, and they felt like they weren't going to do well, even though they had the talent to do so.